So when we, some of you may remember with the bags, you got the bags, right? If we have two bags, and over here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten coins. How many coins would be in one bag? Five coins. Well, how did you do that? Divide by two. Yeah. Between the two. Yeah, right. You divide them evenly between the two. So you take the ten coins, divide it by two bags. All right? Well, the thing is, you're going to see this at least slightly differently. So you're going to see something like this. 5x equals uh, 45. Okay? So in other words, this new example says that we have five bags and 45 coins. So what do we do? Divide. 45 by 5, okay? Well, if we look at this second example, what is the coefficient of x? 5. 5, okay? If you can identify the coefficient, so we're going to start out with division, right? Just take the number over here, the constant, and divide it by the coefficient, which is 5. five. That will give you x equals 45 divided by 5 is... Niner. Done. Okay, take the number of coins, divide it by the coefficient of x, and you're done. Here's another example. Okay, so give me a number. Five, three, twenty-five. Here's seven. Three, two, three, eight, eight, eight. Yes, twenty-one is good. I know the answer. All right. Well, yeah, some of you know the answer to this. Uh, so based on, well, yeah, some of you know that 7 times 3 is 21, so x is 3, okay? But yes. if you use the technique with, with division, right, you'd say 21 divided by the coefficient, which is 7. 21 divided by 7 is 3, right? Well, here's what you're going to see, and this is where lives get ruined, and people start jumping off of large buildings, okay? Oh, what? Well, on to something very soft. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, like a giant marshmallow, which may or may not hold you, okay, because the giant ones are still kind of like this big. Okay, uh, here's, here's what's going to happen. See, now that this has happened to you, some of you feel like you can no longer do this problem, okay? No, I'm serious. So, some of you haven't even noticed the change yet. That's how crazy this is. You say, what changed? Okay, oh, oh, uh-oh, it's negative. Now what do I do, Mr. Sal? Please help me. Well, listen, you knew that the answer was three before, right? How many negatives do we have? One negative, so the answer is a negative. One is odd. Bam, it's negative three. Listen, some of you don't think this is destroying your life, but you will find out that it will. So before you decide to bang your head against the pillow, let's look at the situation and see if we can find a nice resolution here, okay? So let's say that we've got this. Mm, we'll make this. Uh, hold on. Uh, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, 60 is good. All right. Well, see this, you guys look at this, 5 times something is 60, but this is not all of the equation, all right? What we're going to do is going to make it a fraction, okay? Now, yeah, right, Sam, thank you. Someone that knows how to freak out about stuff that you should be freaking out about. See, this brings back memories of one of the chapters where we went over fractions and you guys... Well, you freaked out back then, okay? Uh, well, this is not all. What you will see also is this. Oh, jeez. Now, you feel like a zombie on the first level of Call of Duty. Right? It's just easy pickings, man. Just blow their heads off and be good. All right. So, listen, what you have to do here is you're just going to divide. What is the coefficient of x? Yes, Sam. The coefficient of x is 60 divided by a negative 5. That is incorrect. The coefficient of x 
Okay, now some of you would say five. Seven. I meant five sevens. Some of you would say five sevens. It's negative, negative five sevens. It's negative five sevens, okay? So since the coefficient is negative five sevens, you guys remember what we did on the last problems? X equals, all you can do is take the 60 and divide it by negative 5 sevens. Well, that's a little bit more manageable, just that some of you don't realize you can't divide fractions. Well, you could use a calculator, but it would do it wrong for you most of the time. So here's what we're going to do is x equals, it does equal 60, but you can't divide, right? So change it to multiplication. But when we do this, it's still negative. What happens to the fraction? They reciprocate. Seven fifths. Well, now you've got two fractions. 60 over 1 times negative 7 fifths, which is going to equal uh, negative 420 over 5. Well, we've got to simplify this, okay? So we've got x equals, it's negative. What's 420 divided by 5? 84. That's your answer. Now, some of you will find extra little shortcuts that will help you make this not so long. And that's fine, just as long as you show your work. Okay, show your work. What I know in this example is what the coefficient of x is, okay? So uh, x over negative 2 equals uh, 10. Negative 5. Okay. What is the coefficient of x? One. That's all we want to know. I don't want to know what x is yet. What is the coefficient? Quaid. Okay, there is a phantom 1 there, and that's part of it. But that is not all of the coefficient. Yes. What? Sound like you were very close. Sam. Phantom 1 over negative 2. Very good. So it's 1 over negative 2. That is the coefficient. Okay, what is the answer for this problem? Well, again, you're going to take 10 divided by negative 1 half. What is the answer? Okay, now, right, some of you would want to divide. 10 divided by 2 is 5, but it's negative. Listen, it's 10 divided by negative 1 half. It's a fraction. Can't divide fractions. It's the answer is negative 20. 20. Very good, Sydney. What did you X do, equals Mr. Negative 20. This uh, whole modeling thing, they use rectangles and squares and colors. We use bags and coins. Whatever you like best. These two examples, I've given you the equation, the coefficients, and so forth. But let's just look at the equation for now. 3x equals 12. How would you solve this using division? Well, you take the 12 and divide it by the coefficient 3 of x. So 12 divided by 3 is, bam, x equals 4. Solve number 2, the equation. We're just looking at the equation. How do you solve it? Sydney. 8 divided by 2, negative 8 divided by 2. Very good. Negative 8 divided by the coefficient of x is 2. Bam. Negative 4 equals x. Done. Uh, again, the book calls this uh, some really long name. That's, of course, to confuse you. And uh, just don't worry about the vocabulary. Just dividing. All you're doing is dividing. All right, here's another example in the book. So you take the 20 and divide it by the 4. Bam, x is 5. You can check your work. All right, here's another example. You're going to take the 24, divide it by the coefficient of y is negative 8. 24 divided by negative 8, y equals negative 3. All right, now the book is showing this how to check your work stuff. All you're going to do is replace the y value with y. I'm sorry. You're going to replace the y with its value. Thank you. So, in other words, you've had, you'd have negative 8 times negative 3, which is positive 24, right? The nice thing about this checking stuff is that it's a good way for you to know that your answer is correct. The bad thing is, is that it takes work. 
So therefore, only about 1% of you will do it. I'm serious. I would expect one person in each class to do this checking stuff. Just like very few of you checked on the last test, right? It's boring. But, but it's a good way to know that your answer is correct. Okay, all you're going to do on A is you're going to take the 30 and divide it by the coefficient of x. 30 divided by 6 equals 5, which is x. Oh, so easy. Isn't it? Yeah. Is this all? Thanks, man. Here we go. 36. Is this all that's going to be on the homework? No. You get 36 and you can divide it by the coefficient of a, negative 6, which is a negative 6. Finally, on C, you've got this negative 72. Then divide it by negative 9er. How many negatives does we have? Yes. Two. Two is even or odd? Even. even. So the answer is a positive. It's eight. Done. Word problems, and for some reason, whenever you see more than just numbers and a variable, start your, again, your brain freaks out, <laughs> turns into mush, and then it comes out of your nose. In your ears. You got a farmer blow it out, okay? So, listen, if you read this, it will make sense. If she sends 574 texts in a week, how many texts did she send a day on average? All you can do is take 574 and divide it by the number of days in a week. Seven. Well, I'm not going to argue with you. 574 divided by 7. I gave you the answer. It's 82. Good. Try D. Miss, the closest car can travel 24 miles per gallon. She needs to go 348 miles. How many gallons will she need? Uh, listen, uh, I'm going to tell you guys this because it's very important for you guys to know. But uh, listen, if you guys can't do this kind of stuff, well, first of all, because you're not paying attention. Second of all, because you actually don't know how to do it, you're gonna be in you're gonna be in a lot of trouble for this next test, okay? Because this is only one part of what we will be doing in the future. Also, the solving equation stuff you have to do a ton of in both eighth and ninth grade, and then tenth and eleventh, and then if you take math in twelfth grade, twelfth grade as well. If you go to college... Wait, you don't have to do math in 12th grade? I don't know. And then in college, uh, they'll make you do it some more. And then when you go home, you got to do it even more. And stuff. It's part of a whole number. All right. Fly. It is. How did you find that? Peace, 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 peace. Very good. 348 divided by 24 would give you the 14 and a half. Now here's the thing, is if you put 14 and a half on the test, you're going to lose points. Fly. Very good. Gallons. Here's the thing, is if you put 14 and a half gallons on the test, you're still going to lose points. Here's why. Write an equation. Okay. So it is true, and we've kind of made it there already. Just put x equals this. Done. There's your equation. This was another equation. This is the book, the book's equation, and you can use that one if you want. Okay, but uh, it's kind of you can use. All right, let's look at another example. Okay, so so far we've been using only division. Okay, so if you want to choose to use only division, that's great. But you can use only multiplication. So let's look at some more examples. Uh, 7x equals negative uh, hmm, uh, 48. 49. Negative 49. Good. All right, here's the thing is you can divide. If you're going to use division, here's what you have to do. It's actually slightly more complicated, but you get to choose. You got to... Make the coefficient of x a fraction. Well, 7 is not a fraction until you turn it into 1. 7 over 1. 
And here's what you can do. You can take this fraction, you can move it to the other side and multiply. But when you do this, you've got to take the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 7 over 1? 1 7. Very good. 1 7. So 49 would have to be a fraction. So x equals, what's negative 49 times 1? Negative 49. What's 1 times 7? 7. What's negative 49 divided by 7? Negative 7. Negative 7. X equals negative 7. Don't worry about the fraction. If you're going to use multiplication, it's already a fraction, so you don't have to do anything there. You're going to move this over using the reciprocal. Oh, you get to choose if you want to do either multiplication or division. Okay. So since we are multiplying, what's the reciprocal of seven fourths? Four sevenths. Okay. You guys see why this mixed number stuff that we were talking about earlier? It's better to have these as improper fractions. Right. I hope so. Anyways, I don't know if it does. So x equals twenty-one. Now it's multiplied by four over seven. So twenty-one's a fraction. Twenty-one times four. 84 over 1 times 7, 7, so this simplifies into 12. So it looks like x equals 12. Another example, but just in a second. Uh, this multiplication property of equality is just using multiplication to solve, just like we just did. For example, look at number 4 here. What is the coefficient of a? Very good. You got that phantom 1, so the coefficient would be 1 over negative 4. That's the coefficient. Again, you're always either dividing by the coefficient or multiplying by its reciprocal. On E, what is the coefficient of Y? Wait. Uh, 1 over negative 3. Very good. 1 over negative 3. On F, what's the coefficient of M? Ashley? 1 over 5, very good. On G, what's the coefficient of B? 1. Yes? 1 over negative 6. Very good, 1 over negative 6. Oh, oh, bam! Negative okay, six. so now we've been using multiplication the last couple examples, but you can solve these using division, division if you choose. All right, Sydney will do E for us. Please. Thank you. Okay. So what you do, well, what I did was eight multiplied by twenty, eight multiplied by three equals twenty four. So y equals twenty four. Why is that positive, Sydney? Because you have two negatives. Bam! Nailed it. All right, Carly, we'll do f for us, please. Thank you. Okay, so how I do it is I write the number m over 5 equals, then I do negative 7 over 1, and then I cross multiply, which equals negative 35 equals m. That works? Yeah. Excellent. Cross multiplication. Thank you, Carly. I forgot about that. Also, uh... Listen, I, I'm okay with this cross-multiplication stuff. In ninth grade, they're going to hate you for it. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. But good luck with that. Well, but no, Carly, it's still good, okay? It. Yeah, it's good for two years, at least one and a half. And uh, this is a good way to solve these types of equations. Did you call him Sammy? <laughs> All right, Sammy Poo. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sal. I feel so loved. <laughs> then you cross multiply. That's what they call me in high school. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> All 
All right, Sam. Okay. I didn't hear what you were saying there, but uh, that's excellent. Okay. <laughs> All right, so it looks like Samuel, he used uh, cross multiplication as well, and that works. Okay, so you're welcome to use that if you want. Uh, let me this is a very easy way to solve these types of problems. Okay, so uh, let's take a x over, I don't know, negative 4 equals 2, right? The nice thing about these types of problems, it's kind of like cross multiplication. You're just going to take the 4 over here and negative 4 and multiply it over here. So what's 2 times negative 4? It's negative 8. Done. All right, this is great because you guys hate these word problems. Listen, they've given you the equation. Solve it. That's it. Yeah, you still have to know how to label it. But it says how far. Do you think how far would have something to do with hours? No, of course not. It would be in miles. So you know it's going to be in miles. You just solve the equation. You could put it in inches, but then you're doing more math than is required, which is something only nerdy people do, like me. Okay. You're welcome to, though. 180 smiles.